Hey, what's up, everybody? Hope you're having a good day. I'm Jordan Dunlap, and welcome to another episode of History Throughs. Yeah. Missed the last episode of History Throughs. Link is in the description down below. Also, be sure to check out my other YouTube series, Journey Through Jerseys. Now, in the last episode, I mentioned how this was going to focus on Hank Zum, and it will. But it's also going to focus on another black player who was drafted on the same day as Chuck Cooper, Harold Lloyd, and Hank Zum. His name is Harold Hunter. And the reason why I'm doing it like this is because these two particular players, unlike Earl, Nat, and Chuck, they didn't quite have the same type of career with the NBA as um, those three did. However, their stories are still important to tell in the story of how the NBA was eventually integrated. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the stories of Hank Bazzoni and Harold Hunt. Henry Lincoln Dazzoni was born on February 12, 1922, in Harlem. He began his basketball career at Clark Atlanta University, where he played as a center and power forward. After graduating in 1942, he went on to play for the Harlem Rams for a season, after which he played for the Harlem Globetrotters, and then returned to play for the Rams for four seasons. While no known video footage of him exists, newspaper clippings show that Dazzoni was an exceptional player. On April 24th, 1950, his talent would be recognized in a major way. Because on that day, he and three other men broke the NBA's color barrier. The zone would be signed by the Tri-Cities Blackhawks. Unfortunately, unlike some of the other black men who broke the color barrier of the NBA, the zone's career did not have the same success. Due to the racism that he experienced while playing, he quit the team, and his basketball career ended shortly after. He would go on to become a staple in Harlem, operating the Rennie Ballroom with his wife Rose. In the year 2000, the NBA honored Dazzoni as one of its black pioneers during a pregame ceremony. On January 2nd, 2009, Hank Dazzoni passed away. Harold Hunter was born on April 30th, 1926 in Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah. In college, Hunter played as a point guard for North Carolina Central and helped them win the CIAA championship in 1950. He was even named MVP that year for the championship. But that wouldn't be the only big thing that happened to him that year. On April 24th, 1950, he and three other men broke the NBA's color barrier. He was drafted by the Washington Capitals, the same team that Earl Lloyd was drafted to, and became the first black player to sign an NBA contract. But unfortunately, he never got a chance to play in the NBA because he was cut during training camp. But this was not the end of his basketball career. Just a little switch up. He moved to Wilmington, North Carolina and coached boys and girls basketball at Williston High School for the 1950 to 1951 season. From 1952 to 1954, he was the athletic director for P.S. Jones High School in Washington, North Carolina. He was also the coach of the football, baseball, track, and tennis teams. He would go back to coach at Williston from 1954 to 1957. He then went on to serve as assistant coach for the Tennessee State Tigers basketball team from 1957 to 1959. He would become the head coach in 1959 and remained in that position until 1968. In total, he had a winning record of 172 to 67 making Hunter the second winningest basketball coach in Tennessee State history, a title that he still holds today. In 1968, his last year coaching at Tennessee State, he became the first African-American to coach the U.S. men's Olympic basketball team, leading them to a win over the Soviet team. From 1974 to 1977, he coached men and women's basketball for Xavier University. While he achieved a lot of success with the team, one of the more prominent things he did with the team was push them toward community service. One example of this was an exhibition game they played against the Big Brothers of Greater New Orleans on November 8th, 1975. During the 80s, he was an assistant coach at Dillard University for the women's basketball team. From 1986 to 1991, he would coach his final team with the Southern University women's basketball team. In 
2009, his alma mater, North Carolina Central, retired his jersey. On March 7th, 2013, he passed away. When neither of these two men achieved the same level of success as Earl, Chuck, and Nat, all their names are still important in history. Because without them, the NBA might not be what it is today. That does it for another episode of History Through Hoops. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like it, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram is the same name, jdunnaxtv. Stay tuned for the next episode of History Through Hoops, where I'll be going to the story of the first black man to play professional basketball. I'm talking like before the NBA was even a thing. So again, thank you guys for watching. God bless, and see you next time.